Hello and welcome back to the series on NER or Named Entity Recognition for the purposes of the digital humanities. In the last video, we looked at how to create a custom training set for the purposes of training a machine learning NER model in Spacey. In this video, we're going to take what we did in the last video and put it to practice. So we're going to take that training set that we made and we are going to use it to train a custom NER model. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. We're going to be working with the same functions that we had in the last video, this load data, this save data, and we're not going to necessarily need this test model function anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that just for the purposes of this video. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create our training data by simply using our load data function. And that load data is just going to take one argument. It's going to be data backslash HP training data dot JSON. And let's print off training data just to make sure it loads in correctly. And we see that we have, in fact, what we want to see, a list of lists. So it's a list of all of our different uh, entities. And we can load it in one segment at a time, which is our paragraph. And we have our text followed by our entities, which is followed by a list of tuples of entities. Fantastic. Now what we have to do is we have to create a function where we can pass that training data into Spacey so that we can train a custom NER model. And what follows, I'm going to be largely following what uh, what is in the spacey uh, in the spacey uh, documentation and also on several different medium and towards data science articles that I'm going to provide a link to in the description down below. So don't think that what I'm about to show you is by any means my own custom code. I will cite things accordingly. So we're going to create a function and this is going to be called simply train spacey. And this train spacey function is going to take two arguments. It's going to take the data that we're going to pass to it. So we're going to pass that training data to it. And we're also going to pass in iterations. So iterations are going to be the number of times or the epochs, the generations of the training process. So the Pythonic or the uh, standard way that this is done in Spacey documentation is 30. So that's what we're going to do here. Sometimes you'll want to do more, sometimes less. But 30 is going to be what we're going to do, and you're going to find that this is going to take a long time, and that's okay, because we have a lot of training data that we're going to pass to it. So we're going to say train data is going to be equal to data. Next, what we're going to say is NLP is going to be equal to spacey.blank. We're going to make a blank fresh model that's going to be an English model. And here we're going to be actually saying that if NER not in NLP.pipe names, so if the, the model doesn't have an NER pipeline, then we're going to have to create it. So we're going to say NER is going to be equal to NLP.createPipe. And here we're going to simply say NER. That's going to tell Spacey to create an NER pipeline. So we're creating one from scratch. And then we have to add that pipeline to the... Uh, we have to add that pipe to the pipeline. <laughs> so we're going to add in the NER, and we're going to say last is equal to true. This is typically where um, the NER falls in the pipeline because the NER is dependent upon a few different things that occur before it. That's going to be beyond the scope of this video, but something we address in the next video, lesson number five, when we look under the hood of Spacey. So we're going to say for underscore annotations and train, ooh, and train data. There we go. So we're going to iterate across all that. We're going to say for int and annotations dot get, we're going to say get entities. So we're going to try to grab all of the entities that, uh, that are referenced in each, uh, each training data set. There we go. And then we're going to say NER dot add label int two. And what this is doing is it is grabbing this. So for us, we only have one label, it's person. But if you're working with a training set that's going to have person, GPE, location, organization, etc., you're going to have multiple labels. This is the code that you write so that you can iterate across the entire training set and make sure that every single label has been added into the model successfully. Otherwise, you might forget something and return an error. So we're going to say other pipes is going to be equal to, and again, here we go, we're going to write this, pipe, or pipe and nlp.pipe 
name. So we're going to iterate across that. If pipe does not equal NER. Okay. And then we're going to say with NLP dot disable pipes. There we are. This is going to make it so that our um, other pipes are not affected. We're going to say optimizer. So we're going to create an optimizer object. It's going to allow us to actually begin the training process. And we're going to say for ITN and range iterations. So we're going to iterate over uh, what we're going to see when I pass this or call this function. We're going to iterate for 30 times. But having this as an argument means that we can adjust the function without adjusting uh, the things within it because we can pass a different argument for the amount of iterations. So we're going to say then just so we know where we're at in the training process, starting iteration. And we're going to say plus, and we're going to make this into a string, ITN. That's going to allow us to actually know where we're at in the training process. And this is where we're going to call in random. We're going to random shuffle train data. This is a common practice in machine learning. You want to randomize your training data so that the um, so that the model doesn't just memorize order. Instead, it memorizes actual attributes of the training data. We're going to say losses is going to be equal to an empty dictionary. And we're going to say for text, annotations, and train data, which is going to iterate across the text here and then the actual uh, annotations or the entities. For each of these, we are going to say NLP dot update, and we're going to say text. Let me bring this down so it's easier to read. Text annotations. So it's going to grab the text, the annotations, and we're going to pass in a uh, dropout of 0 0.2. This is going to prevent overfitting, standard practice. Overfitting, if you don't know, check out my machine learning for DH series. Overfitting is a common problem when uh, doing machine learning, and there's several ways to avoid it. Avoid it. One of the ways is with dropout. Again, it's beyond this video to explain that in depth, but check out my, my machine learning videos if you're interested. And stochastic gradient descent optimizer losses is going to be equal to losses. And then we're going to finally simply print losses. And then what we're going to do after this whole thing is done, we are going to return our NLP. Our NLP in this case is going to be our actual model that is fully trained. And so when we run this function, we're going to have a model returned to us. So we're going to say uh, NLP is going to be equal to, this is where we're going to call our train spacey function. And that's going to take two arguments, if you remember correctly. The first one is going to be our train data. The second one is going to be our iterations. I'm going to pass 30 for this video. So what I'm going to do is I am going to then add nlp.toDisk, and I'm going to pass in HP NER model. And that's going to be the title. And that's going to allow me, just like we saw in the last video, to save that trained model. And I'm going to have to cut off the video because it's going to take a little bit of time. And I think from past experiences that the training process, in order to use the GPO, I don't, I shouldn't be recording. So I'm going to pause the video now and jump back after the training process is over. So I'll start it right now. Oh, there we go. Okay, our model has finished training, and if you notice, it took uh, 600 or 6,000 seconds, so whatever that comes out to, uh, and it took a while to train because our training data was so vast, and if you look at this, we outputted the results, and the one thing I should mention is that when I initially ran it, the last thing that you saw was a whole bunch of losses being reported. I had the print uh, method indented like this. I simply put it back so that only each iteration's total or final loss was um, was reported. And over the 30 generations or epochs or iterations, you see the loss consistently get lower and lower. And that's a very, very good sign. And if you notice, I have saved the model, in case you forgot, to HP, so Harry Potter, underscore NER, underscore model. And you see it over here on the left, and it actually has an NER model in it, unlike the entity ruler in our HP NER, entity ruler that we had in the last few videos. 
So once you have the data, or once you have the model trained, it comes time to actually test the model. So let's see if it can generalize pretty well. So to test it, I'm going to be grabbing this random thing I just found on uh, the Harry Potter wiki. And what it is, is it's going to be just the first few paragraphs of Harry Potter's description. And we're going to see if we can get this model and see how well it performs on this test case. So let's go ahead and just kind of load in our model. So we're going to say NLP is going to be equal to uh, spacey.load. And we're going to pass in that argument of our new HP underscore NER underscore model. And what we're going to do is we're going to say doc is going to be equal to NLP. And we're going to pass in our test. I think test is what I call this object. Yep, it is, which is just the string. And then we're going to say for int and doc.ents, print int dot text and dot label. And what this is, is it's completely unseen data. And we're going to see how well our new model performs. And that was in real time. And we see that our model is going to be a little all over the place sometimes. So we see uh, Harry Potter or Harry and Potter are both grabbed. James is not. Now, there's a very good reason why James is not grabbed right here. And instead, 1980 is grabbed. It's because we're looking at a test case that has uh, kind of some wrong stuff. So this is poorly formatted. James has this footnote behind it. So what can we do? Well, we can clean it up and see if our model performs a little bit better. But we can see on an unclean text, it's performing remarkably well. It's grabbing both individual names, such as Harry. It's grabbing full names, Lord Voldemort. And it's grabbing uh, characters like Sirius Black, who actually, and this is why this is important, well, Sirius Black is mentioned in the first book just once. So with only one training set that had Sirius Black, the model was able to grab it fairly accurately. I'm curious, however, how it performs on data that it hasn't seen. So characters that might come from later in the book series. So we see uh, going on down the list, I don't really see any characters necessarily that aren't in the, uh, the first book, Salazar Slytherin. Let's see if it gra grabbed any of the Salazar Slytherin examples. And it hasn't because it hasn't really seen anything. So in order to clean this up a little bit, we can just simply use regular expressions. So we're going to import RE and we're going to, uh, let's just uh, make a simple function. We're going to say def clean text. And we're going to use a very simple regular expression that we can pass our text into. And I use this all the time. So it's going to be cleaned is going to be equal to re.sub. And I'm not going to explain what's happening here. I'm just going to explain that it works. And so we're going to try to grab every instance where there is a open and a closed square bracket, an open and closed parentheses. And we're going to delete those square brackets, delete those parentheses. And at the same time, we are going to um, delete everything that's within them. I'm actually just going to copy and paste it over. And we're going to just return. We're going to do cleaned. And I'll include this in the description down below. But this is going to allow us to simply pass in our text. And uh, we're going to be saying test is going to be equal to clean text. And we're going to pass in that test. And now we're going to run that. And I suspect we'll actually have better results. And sure enough, we do. So if we look here. Um, we have actually successfully grabbed Harry James Potter as a single entity. We have successfully grabbed James, Lily Potter. Phoenix is grabbed for some reason. That's kind of interesting considering that that's not in the training set. <laughs> um, but that's the model uh, not generalizing too well on the Sunseen data. But we see fairly good and accurate results. Now, this is something that we would expect to see because all of these characters are mentioned in the first book. They're all mentioned in the training sets, therefore. What we want to see is a model that's able to generalize a lot better. And the way that we can do that is we can introduce it to more training data, or what we can do is we can introduce it to new word vectors. And that's where we're going to be going in this series after this video and after the next video. I'm going to show you how to actually improve these results significantly by creating and generating custom word vectors based on the domain of Harry Potter. And when we do that, and when we insert these word vectors into Spacey, one of the things that we're going to see is vastly improved NER as a result. 
with no more training data than what we have right now. That's going to be it for this video, though. In the next video, we're going to start to take a look at Spacey under the hood. We're going to look at the models, look at the CFG files, look at the meta.json uh, files, and see what makes Spacey models actually tick. This is going to allow us in the later videos to start training Jensen word vectors and inserting them into these Spacey models. That's going to be it for now, though. Thank you for listening, and if you've liked this video, please like and subscribe down below.